I don't know if you all heard him say local sustainable food, but when I was at the TED conference last year and heard Dr. Lee speak, I was so excited, and I'm so excited that he's here today. So my first question is, why did you say local sustainable food as opposed to conventional? Is there something special or different about it, and why are you looking at, at that? So we are very interested in studying the health benefits and the cancer-fighting properties of local uh, sustainable uh, methods that actually generate foods. And we, we believe that there can be large differences. And we've already seen that these types of differences can occur in other measures of food. So for example, if you take a look at the measurement for the sugar content uh, in foods, or, or wine, for example, the BRICS uh, measure, we know that when you measure locally sustainable grown carrots, and you compare it to uh, commercially grown carrots, there are huge differences, orders of magnitude. So we're now setting out to actually take a look at this, and as soon as the crops come up this spring, we're gonna be starting to take a look at tomatoes and strawberries and onions and many other types of fruits and vegetables and very interested in collaborating with the local sustainable community. Fantastic, so you had a list of foods that you've put up, and I know that you're, I think, looking into even more foods. Have there been any surprise foods? Right, well, so, you know, some of the very important uh, work that we've done is we've created a database in the last year. And that database really is the first amalgamation of all the evidence that exists, both from uh, population studies in people, uh, in communities, as well as in the laboratory, so basically the research lab, and pulling together the benefits of foods uh, in, in the context of cancer and starving cancer. And what we found is pretty remarkable because in addition to the, to the expected um, players like broccoli and cruciferous vegetables and fruits like strawberries, we've also found some surprises. One of the surprises, for example, is cheese. And so it turns out that certain kinds of hard cheeses, for example, like the cheeses you'd find in Holland, Gouda, Jarlsberg, Edam, and Emmenthal, for example, are actually um, started with a bacteria whose fermentation byproduct generates a special form of vitamin K called vitamin K2. Uh, if you're a scientist, you might know this as menaquinone. And it turns out that menaquinone is a powerful anti-angiogenic molecule. And if you look at human studies, eating as little as two slices of cheese a day um, can actually reduce your risk of lung cancer, breast cancer, uh, as well as prostate cancer. Other kind of foods that are very interesting would be, for example, like um, uh, shrimp. Uh, I'm ordering the cheese board tonight. <laughs> There have been some studies, for example, in Southeast Asia where prawns are eaten, and it turns out that eating the equivalent of eight to nine prawns a day actually also reduces your risk of cancer, and even papaya. A papaya a week reduces the risk of cervical cancer. And chocolate? So chocolate is really the... the <laughs> we believe that chocolate is the holy grail, and we know for a fact that chocolate actually affects blood vessels. So we're actually gonna be collaborating with um, some of the real innovators uh, in the chocolate world, including uh, Vosges, uh, to really explore the, um, the biology and the alchemy uh, of what we can do with chocolate. So stay tuned for that later this year. See, and you all thought you were just having a chocolate tasting. And you're actually doing something good for your body. So is eating the foods you listed only good to help prevent disease, or can it also help once you might get a disease? So there is overwhelming evidence that anti-angiogenic foods can actually prevent cancer, but there's also a growing body of evidence that actually would be useful if you have cancer. So for example, uh, there was a big question answered in 2009 by a large study out of China that showed that women who have been already diagnosed with breast cancer who eat more soy, not less soy, more soy, actually have better survival. Uh, other studies, for example, the tomato study that I mentioned uh, in the TED Talk, the more servings of tomato eat, the better the survival from prostate cancer itself. And there's also some pretty compelling evidence that, that people who eat black raspberries can actually reverse cancerous changes in the esophagus, stomach, and even colon. That's phenomenal. I mean, you mentioned about the, the quantities of food, because a lot of times I think people think, oh, you know, wine. I need to drink four bottles a day for it to help kind of thing. You know, is, is there, and you said like two slices of cheese, 
but are there specific amounts? I mean, is it generally something we can actually eat and it is realistic? Right, so, so as part of our database, we're, we've actually, um, we're interested in looking at the food type, the biologically active molecule, the quantity you have to eat, and the frequency, and also the cooking uh, approach that, that can actually make a difference as well. So uh, one of the things we've done is we've launched a, uh, an online campaign called Eat to Defeat, as an eat2defeatcancer.org nonprofit site, and you can get this information. But for example, all this information is boiled down. So for artichokes, which actually inhibit angiogenesis, it's about a half a cup uh, a day, or two to three servings of a large artichoke heart a week. You look at strawberries, it's about a cup a day. Uh, fish high in omega-3 fatty acids, it's about three servings a week, six ounces, which is the size of the palm of your hand uh, uh, a week. Um, and so you can actually start to really drill down into some practical amounts of foods that have been shown in population studies actually to make sense in terms of cancer. So we're really not far from helping to guide a rational diet and think of it as sort of an entirely different um, dimension of the food pyramid. Thank you so much, Dr. Lee. I hope you all will speak with him during the reception after. Thank you. Phenomenal talk.